This is what we are going to build today. It's going to be a podcast anything app, okay? So let me just walk you quickly through how this is going to work. Uh, the user can upload a document. This could be a PDF markdown text file. We're going to send this over to Gemini 3. And here we are going to use Gemini 3 to create a podcast script. And we want the app to be like a podcast anything. And for that, we're going to use multi-speech. Uh, but we also want to be able to set some parameters in the app. This could be how long it's going to be. Is it going to be a style of a roasting in the context? Steelman Strawman the context? Explain it like uh, a fifth grader. And basically what the Gemini is going to do is going to write a script for the multi-speech. We're going to send this to the multi-speech API from also Gemini. And what we get back is a podcast episode. And this has like two different speakers, as you will see soon. And I think it works out pretty good. And then you can just download the episode. You can listen to it wherever you want. So basically that is the app I'm going to do today. So uh, yeah, let's just get started. I'm going to show you a few things we need up front. And then we can just go into Cloud Code and build this. So the context we want for this is uh, some context from Gemini. We want the audio context. We want the multi-speech context. And we want the Gemini 3 uh, yeah, text uh, context. And yeah, the documents. So we can understand documents. And all of this documentation you can find on the Gemini API um, yeah, page, docs page, Gemini API docs. And you can find all the context you need here. So yeah, here you can see the document understanding. I just copy this, paste it into my markdown file here in docs in my own folder. I have the Gemini API key. Uh, I also have a test script here. I just wanted to see if it worked. That is just a simple test script. And that is basically my whole setup. Uh, before we get into Claude. So yeah, we have the context, we have the ID, now we just gotta build it. So like yesterday, we start here uh, in the terminal. I'm just gonna go into Claude in the directory I'm in. And again, I'm gonna switch to plan mode like we did yesterday because I want Opus 4.5 to generate a plan for me. So now I'm gonna, just gonna explain the ID uh, to Claude and then I'm just gonna, yeah, bring you back when I have the plan. Okay, so I explained the full ID here now to Claude Max using my text-to-speech. I thought I could just skip this in the video because it's just such a long rant. So basically, if you want to read the full prompt I gave it in here, you can just pause the video and just read what I said to it here using my text-to-speech. So what's going to happen now is that uh, we have started now looking into the plan. So you can see we have these three explore agents. And I'm just gonna let this run and I'll take you back when we have the plan. Okay, great, that was done. Now we have the plan, right? And I kind of read through this and it seems pretty strong. We have the TTS backend. We're gonna keep this as Python and we're gonna do kind of a Next.js more style front end. We have our voices, we have our styles and the length is gonna be, we have a uh, length here. So two to four, four to six, six to eight, something like that. And uh, you can always iterate on this. And we have the two voices. And we have the, the prompts for the write a comedic roast style podcast, right? And of course, it's going to use the context we put in. And I just, I think this looks good, right? Uh, we might do some iteration at the end, but we'll see. And we kind of have the, everything here. Also, yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So yeah, I'm just going to head, go ahead, start this. So now we are back out from plan mode. We're just going to run through this and see if we can build up. Okay, so that was done. So now kind of the agent has run through everything, right? You can see uh, here we have the podcast anything. We have the structure, the features, and I open this in my local host here. Boom, we got it. So here we can just upload our file. So I I actually did, I grabbed kind of my, I guess I could show you this, my just a few lines from my credit card statement. Right, and I just want to see if we can roast this, okay? So let's just upload our credit card statement. And okay, so you can see now we get the UI, we can pick roast, explain, steelman, strawman. I'm gonna do roast two to four minutes and hit generate. And if you scroll down here now, you can see we have this nice timeline. And now we're just gonna wait to, yeah, we are generating the audio. And hopefully we can also play this now in this uh, window here. So yeah, let's just let this complete and I'll take you back and let's listen to kind of the result here. Yeah, we got it. So you can see your podcast is ready. We have the option to download. Uh, let's listen to one minute. Okay, so we're going to do one minute of each. And we're going to do three examples. So I'm just going to play this now. And yeah, I guess you can just listen. All right, Sira, let's dive into the financial abyss, shall we? 
This month's credit card statement looks like a Viking raid on my bank account. <laughs> oh boy, where do we even start with this masterpiece of modern spending? It's like a travel brochure for Norway sponsored by Apple. Exactly. We've got Apple.com, Bill, twice. Are they charging me extra for the existential dread their products induce? And then there's Many, Norway, and Rima 1000, Norway. You were definitely eating well, or at least attempting to. I was experiencing Norwegian culture, Sarah, which apparently involves overpriced groceries and questionable fermented fish. Okay, but then there's Hertz, Norway, Frank. You didn't buy a whole Hertz franchise, did you? No, it's a rental car. Though honestly, given the total, buying the franchise might have been cheaper in the long run. Followed closely by Beak. Okay, so I guess it tried to be humorous here. Did it make it? I'm not quite sure. Uh, but it did work. That's what I wanted to see. Okay, so yeah, pretty cool. Uh, let's try something else. So I found this... Um, I found this uh, bench, uh, bench, butter bench paper here. So this is evaluating LLM controlled robots for practical intelligence. I downloaded this. So uh, let's do create another and let's upload this PDF file. Okay, butter bench. Uh, I guess we need to, yeah. Let's see if it, this actually works. I'm not quite sure. Let's try it out and see if we can get this to work. Yeah, we got there in the end. It just had to kind of upload this. So this was four megabytes, so it took some time. So here, I'm gonna think we're gonna do simple explanations for everyone. I think that's a good idea here. And again, let's just do the two to four minutes because uh, yeah, I guess we could also make it longer. But just for the sake of this, let's just do the shortest version. So yeah, I'm just gonna again generate this and let's listen to uh, explain it like a fifth grader about the butter bench, bench uh, uh, paper. So again, let's just do the same. Uh, I'm gonna play uh, about a minute of it. And yeah, let's hear how this turned out. Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. Today we're diving into something really cool. Robot butlers. Not quite Rosie from the Jetsons, but we're talking about robots controlled by AI to help us with everyday tasks. Sounds futuristic, but what tasks exactly? Well, researchers at Andon Labs created a benchmark called ButterBench. It's all about testing how well these AI-powered robots can handle practical intelligence. Practical intelligence? What's that in robot terms? Think about it like this. Analytical intelligence is solving a math problem. Practical intelligence is figuring out how to navigate a crowded room to grab a snack. Ah, so it's about dealing with the real, messy world. Exactly. Butterbench tests things like finding a package, figuring out if it needs refrigeration, and even noticing if someone's moved from where they're supposed to be. Yeah, again, uh, I think this worked pretty good. We did follow the instructions to do a simpler explanation for this. So you can hear that in the example. Uh, yeah, I might listen to the full thing, but for now, we're just going to keep it like this. So the explain it like you're five from the Butterbench paper worked. I like that. Uh, I want to find one more example so we can also test out the steel man versus straw man debate. Uh, I'm just going to find some article, I think. Okay, so I have this article here. Anthropic CEO weighs in on the AI bubble talk and risk taking among competitors. So this is Dario Amade, yeah, having a talk. Uh, so we have this article. So let's head over here and let's do article, okay. And we're going to do the steel man versus straw man. Again, let's do two to four and generate. And yeah. Uh, let's hear uh, if we can actually follow the prompt here and we get this back and forward arguments. Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. Today, we're diving into some recent comments from Anthropics CEO Dario Amode about the AI industry. Specifically, whether or not it's all one big overhyped bubble, or at least that's what I'm hearing from the news. Well, Amode's take is a little more nuanced. The core argument is that while AI has incredible potential, some companies are taking unwise risks regarding infrastructure investments, and that could lead to trouble. Let me lay out the strongest version of this. Okay, hit me with it. The most compelling argument is that the rapid growth of AI creates a significant dilemma. Companies need massive computing power, meaning they must invest heavily in data centers. However, the economic payoff timeline for AI is still uncertain. So what's the problem? Just build more data centers. It's the future, right? That's the straw man. The problem is the timing. 
investing in all that infrastructure. But maybe not 100% what I wanted. I wanted to, uh, if I read this prompt, I think I wanted one host to do the Steelman argument uh, for this article, like pro. And I wanted to do the straw man argument kind of against this. Or maybe not a uh, straw man. I guess some kind of, uh, yeah. But I guess it worked out fine. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with this. And overall, again, super smooth workflow using Cloud Opus with Cloud Code. We got the app, everything worked first time. We did some preparation here with uh, the documentation preparation and the context engineering, and that worked out well. That's a good tip. But again, we did a new uh, chip, a new app uh, for Shipmas Day 2. So yeah, look out for tomorrow for Day 3 and have a great weekend.